All right, so I'm coming at you with a bit of a weird video today. Mostly weird because I haven't done a totally unscripted video on the channel in a very long time. And the reason I'm bringing it back is because MSI sent over their RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio for me to check out. And it is one of the most beastly and definitely the most expensive cards I have ever had on this channel. Unfortunately though, I don't have a test system set up and ready to go for it. I do have one coming a little later, but I don't have one right now. But what I do have is this right over here. And this is a Core i5 4440 CPU, which is four cores, goes up to about 4.3 to 4.2 gigahertz, I'm not sure. Eight gigs of GDDR3 memory and an old entry level H87 motherboard. And we're gonna see in this video whether all of this is actually going to bottleneck all of this. Place your bets now. Now, before we get stuck in, if you wanna pick up any of the parts I mentioned in this video or show in this video, please do so via the links in the description. It helps me out a lot and it costs you nothing. So why not use it? Or if you're in South Africa, just grab everything you ever need at Wootware. It's getting kind of cringe that you haven't already. So just go ahead and do that. Oh, and actually before I forget, MSI is actually letting me give away a bunch of their merch in this video. So if you wanna get your hands on a little lucky plushie like this or a gaming tumbler like this, this is actually really dope. Or even like a towel, an MSI towel or a backpack. Just watch till later in the video and I'll give you all the details about that. So first up on the agenda is I'm gonna actually have to put the card into the system connect everything up, make sure everything is actually working, and then we're gonna see what the experience is actually like. So this is actually the first ever gaming system I bought and built all by myself. So this is gonna be pretty nostalgic. We have the RTX 3090 right here. It is a very beefy boy, and I do like the look of it. Okay, and that should do it. And MSI does actually include one of these little support brackets in the box, but I think the card is fine the way it is right now. I'm obviously not gonna leave it in this configuration for all that long, so it should be fine. As for CPU cooler, we're not going extravagant or anything. We're just gonna put on the stock Intel heatsink. I think this is from one of the newer CPUs, but it should still work fine. And yeah, so let's just plop this in. Well, that was easy. And before you freak out, there was some thermal paste pre-applied to both the CPU and the heatsink. So I didn't forget that step. Okay, so we've got the cooler set up, we've got the graphics card set up, RAM is already in there. Unfortunately, I couldn't use the Trident Z Neos that Wootware helpfully supplied me with for the RTX 30 testing. So that's a bummer. But you know, DDR3, come on, I, I can't really do anything about that. I also can't use the Sabrent rocket drive they sent over for the RTX 30 testing as well, which is also a major bummer because this thing rocks. But I'm just gonna use like an old 850 Samsung Evo and a big old one terabyte drive. And then we should be good to go. And now it's done. Hard drive's installed. So all that's left to do is connect up the power. And just in case you thought that none of this could get any more jank, I've got a surprise for you. Now this, my friends, is a 1,500 or 2,000 watt mining power supply or something. So. I'm just gonna use this because I have nothing else, literally nothing else I can use for this right now. So um, yeah, jank for days. So after I get all this connected, I'll see you again in just a sec. And she's done, obviously not the prettiest solution in the world, but we have GPU power, we have motherboard power, we have CPU power, the hard drive and SSD have been connected. So we should theoretically be ready to go with all this jankness and Hopefully it works, and even when it does work, I have a mild feeling I'm gonna regret this. Okay, so we should theoretically be ready to go here, so I'm sure it'll power on. I'm just hoping we actually get it to post. Oh, and another um, great feature of having a mining power supply is it's pretty friggin' loud. So it looks like we're sitting at around 70, okay, we're going, I, okay, no. <laughs> No, we're going 100% CPU usage just from Steam doing its little update over there and we're sitting at about just short of half of RAM usage already. We're back up to 100% on CPU, but um, yeah, this, this is, yeah, this is a bad idea. 
this is a very bad idea. So I'm just gonna wait for the system to settle in so it's not pinned at 100% constantly so we can at least try to run a game somewhat like friggin' I don't know, enjoyably maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is about as good as it's gonna get. We're at about 20-ish percent CPU usage just from sitting here. We've also got memory usage of just under 50%, so like four gigs of the eight, which is, I, I don't think we're gonna get much better than that. So I'm just gonna sort up Horizon Zero Dawn because I've actually been playing that a lot recently. So I should have a pretty good idea of what it should be performing like. And then hopefully our on-screen display will show you guys what a CPU bottleneck actually looks like and i think we're gonna yeah yeah we're seeing that kind of right away aren't we that is 100 percent cpu usage with gpu usage in the low 30 ish range let's just take a quick look at the settings we're actually going to be trying this at so for display we're at 1080p right now for maximum absolute maximum cpu bottleneck as for graphics, I think we're just going to leave it at favor quality for now um, and just see what this actually runs like. What is this? What is this? Are we in? Are we in or are we out? Are we in? Please tell me we're in. And we're in the game, finally! It only took like another 15 minutes. Now we can actually see just how bad of an just exclusive CPU and maybe RAM bottleneck there actually is. We're standing here and it all looks good at like an average of 70 to 80 FPS at 1080p, which is, it's fine. <laughs> but the interesting thing here is that 100% CPU utilization while <laughs> the GPU is sitting at 50%, which is just an incredibly sad thing to see. I mean, this is a $1,600 graphics card and it's just like it's not even using half of its power we're also averaging about like 230 to 240 watts which i know this card goes up to like 390 watts i've seen it before when it's actually being utilized so th the whole thing is just sad man that being said let's see if this is actually like a playable enough experience i'm actually starting a benchmark right now as well so let's just do my usual run and just see whether this is actually any good or not. It seems pretty good so far. I'm not experiencing any like, oh. I am experiencing some stutters when I like move around really quick, uh, which I guess is kind of to be expected. Um, but yeah, otherwise it seems fine enough. Like this seems totally playable except for when that happens which seems to be happening a lot like you can see the gpu is just trying to push out as many frames as it possibly can but the cpu is just like no no bro you're not getting anything okay let's just kill these two stalkers and we'll call it a day for this game what is happening this is no stop it stop it stop don't come closer. I will... I will cry. And this is why you don't want to pair an 8-year-old CPU with a brand new $1,600 graphics card. We averaged about 50 FPS almost exactly. However, the interesting thing is the 1% and 0.1% lows, which were 0.8% and 0.8 respectively making this whole experience far beyond like not playable okay so what i think i'm gonna do next is just test a couple more games do some benchmarks on them at 1080p which should be the max like cpu bottleneck we can possibly achieve jump over to 1440p to alleviate that bottleneck just a little bit if possible and then we're gonna jump to 4k and test those same games at 4K, which should be the best possible scenario for the CPU to manage a somewhat playable-ish experience when paired with this graphics card. And we're back! 
many, 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 many hours later with the power of editing and I have all the numbers I need. And a little update to this situation is that I actually got the test bench I was going to be using with this card anyway, but didn't have it yet. Well, I got that and I did some more testing on that as well. So we can actually have a good comparison between what this card should be running at versus what it's running at in the system right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. And first up is 1080p and all we've got here is depression. Comparing our 1080p results from this system to our results for the actual good system is just, it's what makes me so sad. <laughs> this is so sad to see. See, even though we were CPU bottlenecked on the 10700 system, because the 3090 is just that powerful that there is still a friggin' like bottleneck on that system. Comparing the two, it's just night and day. We're not getting half of what we should be getting at 1080p with this system. And it's just all a bad time, man. And what's even worse is just the 1% low numbers that we got with the 4440 system. Just most of them were under 10 FPS with Metro being like one of the only two exceptions coming in with 22 and Apex coming in at 102 FPS. Like every other game was just completely unplayable at this resolution with this system. Then moving on to 1440p, we have a pretty similar story where we're getting like half of what we should be getting, but at least at 1440p, we can see that CPU bottlenecks start to alleviate a just a little tiny bit with a lot of the games like upping their 1% scores by more than like 100% in most of the cases. So at 1440p, this becomes a somewhat playable option. And at 4K, we're seeing a kind of similar story with most of the scores averaging out to about the same across all three resolutions, including 4K, obviously, and with a bit of an uplift on the 1% lows. Uh, here and there, in some of the games, it was a little lower than at 1440p, but uh, it's, it's all just screwy, man. Like the 1% numbers at 1440p and 4K, I would deem somewhat playable, sort of, maybe, at least in some of the games, but overall, it's just, it's still a horrifying experience. And yeah, let's just cut to the conclusion and let me give you all the details about the competition to win that MSI merch right about now. So if I said that I was surprised at all by the results we got today, I would be very much lying. I knew going into this whole thing that the 3090 was going to be absolutely bottlenecked into oblivion by the 10 year old system I had it in. However, I didn't know exactly how bad it would be and I had a lot of fun seeing just how bad it would actually be, which is very friggin bad. Obviously, I don't expect anyone to match a 3090 with a 10 year old gaming system or anything super low end. That would just make no sense. So this was all just for fun and I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. So nothing else to do except let you know how to enter the giveaway for this backpack right here. Very dope. This gaming tumbler, also dope. This MSI Brian towel, which I actually need right now. And this MSI Lucky the Dragon plushie. Very cute. Now, firstly, you have to be a South African resident. This is a South African only giveaway. Unfortunately, we can't really ship outside of SA right now. So better luck next time. So if you're in South Africa and you wanna get your hands on all this cool stuff, let me know down in the comments something like, hey, look, I'm from South Africa. Give me the free things. And while you're at it, also follow MSI South Africa on Twitter and me if you want. If you don't want to, that's also fine. And then we'll pick someone from all of you to give the stuff to. That's how these things work. So yeah, massive thanks to MSI South Africa for sending me the card to check out. I will be doing a proper review on it some point soon on this channel. So keep an eye out for that. And then massive thanks to Wootware for just being the best e-tailer in South Africa. You guys rock, like, just, yeah. Yeah, love, 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 love. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.